So, uh, where was it? Practices, techniques, things like meditation or any other approaches that have come through those traditions, can they tell us something about what went missing? Then I was also looking at what could be termed anomalies in our current physiology and our current perception. Classic examples like handedness. Are they pointing to something, a broader context maybe that we missed? Some of the very best performances that athletes have ever achieved, their subjective account, it's very mystical in its description. You often talk of a dreamlike state, time standing still. They can't really account for how it happened. And I'm going to suggest that it's a change in management system, going from a very inefficient management system, then you can train and train and train, and yeah, it gets better. You shift to a much more efficient management system, and everything works automatically, effortlessly. And I think it correlates with the martial arts tradition, the ideas of trying to quiet the mind. That was the main focus, less about the training, more about the mind. And it, it was still a, a tricky process, but eventually, when you finally quiet the mind, everything just automatically happens, and it's phenomenally good. So these, I'm just suggesting, are clues. What would the world look like if our neural system was retarded, if there was a serious problem with our neural system? One side was more affected than the other. The classic left-right brain stuff. Left side of our brain, for reasons that I've started to explain, it's lost the hormonal buffering from our plant origins. It's now attacked by our own hormones, testosterone in particular, and it's much more primitive. It's lost its ability to be self-aware. It doesn't do context very well. It lies, it's frightened. Cannot piece, it cannot perceive reality. It's very deluded. The other side of our brain still has some functional capacity. We get glimpses of reality. We draw a lot of function from there unknowingly. If that were the case, would it make any sense? The civilizations we've created, the hierarchical civilization that's supposed to be very advanced. What about our personal relationships? Community, friends, how we get on? And what about looking in the mirror, all the, all the secrets we hide from ourselves, the low-level paranoia, the insecurity that most of us experience? But there's a question here I would say is worth addressing. If there isn't a problem, if our neural system is fully functional, there's no threat. It would be a sensible op option to check on a regular basis. In the same way you check your tires and check the radiator if you're, if you're going on a long drive. You check everything. We've never checked. Not in the modern era anyway. Okay, so pretty radical suggestion and there'd have to be some pretty massive evidence. We've covered a little bit of it, but a few more reminders. Coming in from a different angle this time. Certainly, piecing together the picture, uh, the there's a lot of data around. That's what I was saying earlier on. There's got to be a lot of data. There's got to be masses of evidence if our neural systems crash really badly, but shot the hell, basically. Um, all I'm saying is it's so badly damaged, our rational mind, we don't even see the blatantly screamingly obvious. And there's masses of evidence for that, behaviorally, psychologically, the world we've created. And then you start looking at the neurological lit literature with that question in mind, and it's like, oh my God, what's going on here? Some of the most eminent people you expect to have gone, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they do exactly what the data says they're going to do, miss it completely. So another perspective. Again, these are all just building, building the perspective, building the context. People have been looking at this from slightly different angles. I'm suggesting there's a simple conclusion in the middle of it all, and in the middle of our ears. This guy's been, um, he got interested in split brain stuff years ago when he, he was interested in savant syndrome as well. But he came up with the idea of using a relatively non-invasive technique to try and inhibit the left hemisphere and see what happened. And people thought he was nuts. I was in touch with him before he even set the experiments up. And uh, sure enough, he's got some results. They're quite weak, but they're tangible. You inhibit the left hemisphere, and you begin to enhance these so-called other skills, more creative skills. So yeah, when something doesn't quite fit the script, however, you very rarely tear up the entire story and start from scratch. What you do instead is deny, deny or confabulate in order to make the information fit the bigger picture. So I'm just reiterating, this is in the literature. This is in the literature. All the time it's in the literature. Even when you're writing about it, you're writing about it and then coming up with another conclusion and they don't fit. And that's published and everybody's like, oh, that's cool. You go along the corridor of anthropology, primatology, pharmacology, they will tell you, we were flooded with chemicals that inhibited testosterone. That's all in the orthodox literature. So it's totally out of context. I mean, it's real. That is what's going on. 
It's like, oh, what's this all about? Fascinating. Maybe it's a specialized adaptation. Maybe it's a good thing. But it's strongly correlated with autistic traits, loss of function. And it's strongly, it's strongly correlated with gender differentiation. Testosterone isn't exclusively male hormone, but it's predominantly male, so it affects males more. So as this, as this wider context has, has progressed, you end up losing this, losing this blanket effect from the fruit biochemistry. And our neural system gets hit, the left hemisphere gets hit harder, and the male left hemisphere gets hit harder. So you end up with patriarchal systems emerging. It's really a symptom of a neurodegenerative disease. It's to do with fear and control. Once you start losing your function and senses, the world becomes a more frightening place. When you look at the data, and this is where it comes back to what I was talking about the other day, basic engineering, we've lost 95% minimum. That's minimum, and I'm being generous here because I don't want anybody saying, oh, it's 94, you got it wrong, or whatever, you know. It's, it's more like 98, and that's in people who eat reasonably healthily. And most people who eat totally rubbish diets have like 100% loss of the developmental environment cocktail, the hormones and fruit that were integral to the development of our brain. We've lost 95% of the antioxidants, 98%, almost 100%, and so on and so on. And our neural system is the most complex thing we know, the most chemically sensitive thing we know. If we lost 1%, mm, it's a bit worrying. If we lost 5%, that's pretty serious. 95% plus. It's not my data. I'm just providing a context here. So it's back to the discussions on cerebral dominance and what's going on and the delusion and why we can't see our, our, our neural systems made from essential fatty acids. You already know how delicate they are. They oxidize at room temperature. Essential, we don't make them internally. So we're chronically deficient. We heat them in oxygen, build the superstructure of our neural system. And then there's nothing to protect it. It was immersed in a bath or a bath of antioxidants all the time, 24 7 for millions of years. Now they've all gone. It rusts. And the fruit's there. It's, it's expanded for a reason. It's expanded because of this co evolutionary symbiotic relationship. It's swollen over. For the most part, there are variations. But we've just got a swollen over. And it's designed to be eaten. It wants to be eaten. It's part of the seed dissemination process. And it's rich. Not only in chemicals that sustain its symbiotic um, relationship, but also the very chemicals that produce new life, generate new life. So you know, we're, we're specializing in eating sex organs. We're naked in the forest. It's all sticky and messy. And you might no wonder a sexy creature. We might be separated in space and time. Biochemically, at the developmental level, we weren't separate. So this is passion fruit with a seed growing, and then I've just if you just move along. This is really what was going on. This is our developmental environment. And we never left. Well, eventually we did. So it was like, we're basically, I propose, we're running on a primitive neural system. It's not this symbiotic, highly advanced system that runs our neural system. It, it's all integrated. Fruit is a very unusual specialist food. It's like rocket fuel, and you need an advanced system to really make the most of it. We're running on a primitive system now, so that's where I'm cautious about saying it's a whole solution. If it was a whole solution, our ancestors would have figured this out a long time ago. They certainly included in the mix. Natural diets talked about in all the traditions, but they also say, yes, we got serious trouble here, and they were coming up with all sorts of combinations of approaches, really trying to combine the assimilation of fruit with a more functional neural system, so it would assimilate this kind of bootstrapping effect. So anything from you know, the milder approaches that are still culturally acceptable, like meditation and yoga and whatever, anything to sort of move you out of your rational mind. And then there were more powerful techniques, not so much in favor, but still linger on, like sort of combinations in Vision Quest, staying awake for days on end. It's, a, it's an emotive subject here. But if you starve the rational mind of sleep, yeah, it gets clumsy, it gets dysfunctional, it loses control. And that's what they talk about. You stay awake long enough and something else takes over. That's something I experimented with a lot and it's pretty weird stuff. But you can get to a space that's certainly not your normal self. And then there's a judicious use of neurochemical analogues, what we currently class as drugs, even though it's okay to eat fruit, which is way more complex drug-loaded piece of kit. If a neural system that's currently in charge has lost the ability, it's, it's kind of 
the receptors have eroded, they've gone. It doesn't respond anymore to fruit. You almost have to shift first, then you know what it really feels like. Some of these quite crude analogues, they're very powerful, more powerful than they would have needed to have been, but they will shift dominance. But again, mostly in isolation. Now, all these te techniques are often done in isolation. There's a lot of dogma around, oh, you just need to do this, or diet's enough, or whatever. You start putting them all back, dump the dogma, just look at them as treatments, and you can make very rapid progress very quickly. And it's, it's the data suggesting our neural system was still in development. You know, I said it was a, a gestation environment. It wasn't over. And the curve of expansion, which is very rare in biology, was, it was accelerating. It suddenly stalled, and it's gone downhill for about 200,000 years or so. I don't know. I'd love to know. I mean, looking at the traits that can just about be glimpsed today, and then the Arcadian mythology, it would have been a pretty cool experience. And I think that's worth investigating. In an absolute sense, I don't know, but I suspect it's pretty cool. Yeah.